All right, I promised to show off what's working on the uh, on the voltmeter here, or the DVM actually. Uh, so this is a, a, if you haven't watched the other videos, this is a Hewlett Packard 3458A, eight and a half digit voltmeter, uh, uh, DVM uh, multimeter. So uh, let's see, what does it do? So it is working, uh, we can see there. So we have, um, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight digits. All right. It will actually do better than that. If we hit uh, number of digits, nine, uh, it gets you one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So nine, nine digits. And it's not, this isn't a half digit. It's an actual digit. Um, I've read online that you can actually get this thing into a ten and a half digit mode, but I haven't been able to do it on this one. So I don't know if I need a, a different version of software or not. Um, but uh, what is it that we're looking at here? 9.090777. So it's, it's bouncing around a little bit. Uh, it is a nine volt battery. It is actually a nine volt lithium, uh, which should be pretty stable. Uh, so that's what a nine volt lithium does. Now I don't, uh, I haven't spent the time. I mean, I just got this thing yesterday. I haven't spent the time figuring out if that is random variation in the actual machine or that's actual just noise. Uh, that's picked up on the uh, wires. It's just random fluctuations in EM, EM radiation. I, I don't know what causes that fluctuation. If it's thermal. Uh, so having an instrument that can see this far down, right? These are uh, uh, millivolts. This is uh, millivolt. This is microvolt. So it's tens of microvolts. It's changing tens of, wait a minute, that's one millivolt, that's one microvolt, so it's changing tens, uh, point, point one micro, yeah, point one microvolts, uh, so, yeah, one tenths of microvolts, um, so, I, I, I don't know this world, this is a new world to me, and one of the reasons I wanted to get this instrument, so I can do some experiments and stuff that I have in mind, that requires you to be able to look at very, very, very small stuff. Now, I know there's a lot go into metrology and you have to have a, a regulated temperature. You have to have regulated humidity. You have to have regulated EMI. You have to have uh, regulated uh, uh, test connections and stuff because the connections themselves can cause voltages and stuff. And so, yeah, this will be a brand, a brand new world for me. But let me show you what the instrument does. Uh, it does seem to work, but it's not calibrated very well. It seems to be uh, in desperate need of a calibration, and I'm not going to spend money on one. Probably as a thousand dollars to get a calibrator or something. So, uh, but I am going to uh, do a cheesy calibration. So at least I have a starting point. It's about five millivolts wrong right now, um, and so I'm going to calibrate it uh, to a six and a half digit multimeter that I know is is accurate to at least six and a half. So at least this will be as good to six and a half, and then from there we'll have extra. Uh, relative information. So one of the interesting things here is to do relative stuff, right? I don't want this instrument for an absolute number. I want it to look at relative changes. So we can do things like uh, math. Uh, how do you get to the math? That's uh, the other what direction I can do. I can do, it's alphabetical. So you go math and then you can go to null. And so now you can watch it fluctuate. And you can watch if it's going down in value or up in value, right? It's a, it's, it's a battery. And so it's going to have some chemical leakage, but it's also going to have some chemical uh, stuff that goes on that actually increases voltage depending on the temperature. Uh, so 
you know, one of the cool experiments might be to look at uh, temperature fluctuations in batteries and chemistry of batteries and things like that. Um, you can see this one seems to be going in the negative direction right now. It's getting getting lower and lower. We say, well, that's your battery draining. Well, is it really, you know? And uh, this will be a cool instrument to take a, take a look at that. Um, okay, so it does do, uh, it does do that. And I don't know how to get out of math. I guess I could have to go back and, uh, uh, let's see. That back up, math, uh, off. Okay, there we go back. All right, so it, it, uh, it's, it, it is throwing an error, and that's because it says it wants to be calibrated, um, and it knows that it's wrong, so it's telling me, I know you're wrong. Um, let's see, it will measure ohms, so we can demo that. Let me see, it takes it off of... Uh, off of here, uh, and I'll put it into ohms mode, and it comes up and it comes up and in, in, uh, over over overloads on gig ohms. <laughs> so that's pretty cool. We should be able to do some cool measurements with that. But I've got my little uh, test board out here, and we'll just stick it on. We'll stick it on something. See if it measures ohms correctly. So there you go. Uh, it seems to be measuring ohms quite well. Uh, one k ohm. Uh, that's a 0.01 percent resistor, so it seems to be point. Uh, within spec there. So it does do that. I haven't tested uh, current yet. Um, it does seem to pass all of the self-tests except for AC mode. It seems to have some problem in the measurement circuit for doing AC. Um, so, but it seems to be completely good for everything DC. So uh, I'm really, really happy with that. So I do have a working unit. This is a very, very dim display uh, compared to the other one. So I need to swap displays. Um, and uh, let's see what else, what other things can I say about it? Yeah, I'm going to swap the display. It has a very noisy fan, uh, so I'm going to uh, change the fan in it. Uh, I'm just going to buy a new fan. I could put the, probably this one has a better fan in it, but I'm just going to put a, a better fan in it. And, um, and then I'm going to have to get some software. So as much as I hate software in the lab, this instrument is one that requires you to have software. So uh, you really want to do long-term averages, look at trends and things like that. Like if you're interested in this battery, uh, you, you need to have a graph of battery versus the voltage versus time and things like that. So I'm going to, I'm going to get some uh, software. I'm also going to need some software, uh, to do the calibration, uh, and there seems to be uh, a software package that's recommended, Win GPEIB, I think, and uh, I'll be able to um, uh, send the commands to calibrate it. Oh, you can go, well, how are you going to calibrate it? You don't have all the fancy equipment that's necessary to calibrate this thing. Well, this thing is such a fancy voltmeter, it requires a 10 volt source and a 10K resistor. Right, so I've got a 10k resistor. Let's uh, let's see. Let's move my let's move my clip leads over here to 10k. Um, so I've got, I've got a 10k resistor, and so I could calibrate to that resistor and say that's the gold standard, right, and be oblivious. Um, but it, it seems to be good in 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 uh, resistance calibration, so I might not want to do that for voltage calibration. It's about five millivolts out. So I am going to use a source, 10 volts. And then it calibrates itself all at 10 volts. That's all it needs is 10 volts. And then it does all everything relative to that. Um, and so, but it does require you to give it certain commands and things like that over the bus, I think, to, to calibrate it. I need to read up on, on calibration. But uh, we do have a working, um, a, a working machine now. So you can kind of see, you know, what, here's the fluctuates, like, like a resistor is not going to fluctuate, right? So, um, we can see it, sort of see it's going maybe plus or minus five counts at the end there. Uh, but we could also, uh, let's see, we could also change the, uh, change the scale so we can see here. So yeah, that's a pretty small fluctuation in K ohms, right? Point zero zero. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's pretty small. So it's probably thermal noise. 
That's my guess. There's a Megome. Interesting. Oops. 10K. How far will it go? Megome. Megome. Gigome. Gigome. Is that the farthest one? Yeah, that's the that's the biggest final range. 0. 0.0001 gigome. Interesting. All right, we're going to go back to auto. Yeah, it's a pretty nice machine. Um, so I'm not sure what I want to do about combining these two instruments. You could say, well, just take some boards out of this one and put it into this one. But I know, I know this is a working instrument. And so the less I touch, the less will break. And so I think what I want to do is just swap the front panel. I'm going to take this front panel and I'm going to move it up here. It's a prettier front panel. It says Agilent. <laughs> and uh, maybe it's nicer to keep the old HP. But um, I need this display. This, this, this display is nice and, nice and bright. So anyway, there's just a great introduction to the new instrument that I have. You might want to comment down below. If you had an eight and a half digit voltmeter, what would you like to see done with it? What, what experiments would you do? Uh, I have one idea in mind of uh, metal to metal thermocouples. So just how much voltage does a solder joint cause? Uh, uh, and uh, maybe some thermal fluctuations in certain things. I don't know. Uh, batteries. I definitely want to do a bunch of stuff on batteries. I think that's this is interesting because batteries are very, very slow change. Um, and uh, yeah, anyway, uh, pretty cool instrument.